Good afternoon viewers. Welcome to this teleconference session of the School of Social Sciences. Today's topic is on catalog, the key to the library. I am Sevgan, one of the faculty members of Library and Information Science. Why we have chosen this topic today is the BLS program has two important courses which are having practical components also. These two are the important courses which will really help you to organize the collections and make them available for effective use. So, this topic will be very useful to the learners who have joined in this year. So, as these courses are having practical components as I told you, you have to concentrate more on these two courses. It does not mean that you should not go through the other courses. You should emphasize on these two courses. Because in the day to day life, we go everywhere for shopping or purchase of something and to the hotels to many places we come across and go every day say when you go there say for example this is the microphone this has been manufactured by a company say Sony Sony is the company it is manufacturing a number of products but we are not aware of that. So for making the customers aware of the products which they are manufacturing, they have to make a list of products or anything like that. So when you enter the shop or whatever you do, first of all they will tell you about the products to make you aware. First of all, we have to tell what we need, then they will show you the catalog, which means list of products manufactured by them, either in the form of pamphlet or in the form of mimeograph. So through that you will come to know the products and the price also sometimes. Similarly, library is a place where the information is collected, stored, processed and disseminated for the utilization of users. So, the library is acquiring the varieties of documents, number of varieties due to the availability these days easily. These varieties could be of print or non-print. The non-print may be of CDs, DVDs, audio cassettes, video cassettes, whatever may be the kind, but library has to acquire and make the materials available for the users. So after acquiring the materials, it is very much necessary to organize these collections in a systematic way, depends upon the nature of the material and size of the material. So practically you can think of one thing. Non-book materials and book material, uh, print material cannot be stored at one place. So we have to think over it, how to organize these collections and how to arrange systematically so that any user can go through it properly. So for proper arrangement, as I told you, classification and cataloging are important components. You have to classify the documents first. For after classifying, the entire materials will be grouped automatically according to the class number. So when you classify these documents, it has to be arranged at one place or at different places, maybe in the sections or in the multiple floors. So we have acquired the documents, classified and arranged on cells. Then how to make the users 
to be aware of the collections which we have in the library. There, the importance of the catalog comes. So, simply catalog is a list of materials or documents. So, the importance of catalog in the library is it serves as a key or guide to the collections of a particular library. So, first of all, when a user enters into a library, he is guided to the catalog section to go through the catalogs to find out the material materials location where it is available. So, the importance of catalog is to provide the eminent service for the users to make the documents used effectively. So, now let us see what is library catalog. I have given you a brief outline about the general catalog and what is the importance of the catalog and other things also. Now, let us see the technically what is library catalog and what are the types and in which forms that can be provided. <coughs> so, let us start with the definition. If you look at this particular slide, I think it is not visible. The catalog, the term catalog comes from the Greek word catalogos. That means it is a list or register or enumeration of something. So, this catalog can be formally defined. It is an explanatory, logically arranged inventory and key to the documents and their contents and it is confined to the collections of a particular library. So, if you go little further, Dr. S. R. Ranganathan, who is the father of library science, has defined very correctly the term library catalog that it is a list of documents in a library or in a collection forming a portion of it. Just now I told you, it is a list of documents available in a particular library. And he also states that the form of the catalog may be in print form or manuscript form or card form or loose leaves or any other form which will be flexible to add for the new entries in future. So, these are the two definitions by Dr. S. R. Ranganathan and a common definition. From these two definitions, we can shortly say that a catalog is a list of documents available in a particular library and it gives, it provides the entries for all documents and thirdly, it gives the details about the bibliographic information of the document such as author, title, um, <coughs> publisher, name of the publisher, place name, edition and so on. And it gives you the location of the documents also by class number. So, this is the brief definition and meaning of the term library catalog. Now, let us see what are the objectives and functions of a library catalog. So, generally the main objectives of the library catalog is to aid the users or readers in making use of the collections. Then to serve as a guide or key to the collection of documents by providing catalog entries for authors, titles, subjects, sometimes cross references. Then to help the readers to locate the documents 
through the call number which is of class number and book number and to make users aware of the collections through the access number which is written on the catalog card they will come to know what is the real collection of the library and how many documents they have because it is unique access number is unique given to each and every document which is acquired by the library so these are the general objectives if you go into particular objectives CA cutter actually he has described the objectives very particularly in his book called rules for a dictionary catalog which was published in 1876 he has stated the objectives of the library catalog particularly that a catalog should enable a person to find out a book of which the author or the title or the subject is known then to show what the library has by a given author particularly on a given subject and in a given kind of literature and finally it should assist in the choice of a book as to its edition or as to its character so these are the main objectives the first objective emphasizes that a user may come to the library with a with an option to search document either by author or title or the subject so these three are the important for the users they may know whatever they need but it is our duty to provide the catalog for all the options that they are going to come with a request so the first objective emphasizes that the library should provide author catalog title catalog and subject catalog then the second thing to show what the library has the second objective is to know by the users about the documents available in the library by a given author for example a user wants to know the works of a particular author say for example dr s r ranganathan the entries of the particular documents by s r ranganathan should be grouped together by providing subject entries or author uh, sorry author entry so next is the subject similarly the for the subject also if you want to see some subjects in library sense so in that subject some entry should be provided through that entries a person who wants to know the subject uh, documents in library science will come to know through this tool and in a given kind of literature if they want to know something about a particular topic or something they will come to know through these things for that we have to provide the it is just like a subject catalog for specific literature we have to provide it is called descriptive cataloging also and the third one is this is about the particular edition and the character of the particular document so these are the main objectives of the library catalog enunciated by c a cutter so next thing we have seen what is catalog and what is library catalog particularly what are the objectives and functions now let's see what are the types of catalog that can be provided in the library for users the types of catalog could be three of the following alphabetical catalog classified catalog alphabetico class catalog the alphabetical catalog means the entries of the documents are prepared for each and every component that means author title subject 
and other things also. So, these are all arranged in a sequence called alphabetical order. That is why it is called alphabetical catalog. We will discuss about these things in greater detail in the following sections. The second one is classified catalog. Classified catalog means the entries are prepared the leading section will be of call number which is the combination of class number plus book number. So, this will be arranged in a sequence according to the class number and the third one is alphabetical class. So, first one is alphabetical, the second one is classical sequence and third one is alphabetical class catalog. The third one is the combination of the above two, alphabetical and classified catalog. So, these are the three major types of catalog. Now, let us see the alphabetical catalog particularly. The alphabetical catalog, if you look at this particular slide, you will come to know what are the kinds of catalog that can be provided under alphabetical catalog. So, these are the things author catalog, name catalog, title catalog, subject catalog, dictionary catalog. So, author catalog means author is a person who is responsible for the thought content of the particular document. So, a person who is coming to the library with an option to search a document by author this author catalog will be very useful to him or her. <coughs> so, this author catalog has to, author may be of an individual or corporate body. Corporate body means there are some publications by the government also. Say for example, AIU handbook, Association of Indian Universities. It is publishing a handbook every year. So, it is a publication of a government body, corporate body also. So, the entry should be made under AIU, Association of Indian Universities. The author means, it does not mean that only about an individual, it includes the corporate body also. So, the entries are made for the authors and other corporate bodies. After making the entries, it is arranged in alphabetical sequence. The next one is name catalog. See, just if you look at this particular slide, you will come to know the exact example of this author catalog. See here, this is a sequence. This is just like a dictionary. See, Abbas, Aroda, Bhaskar, Bosch, Sakravarti and so on. So, they are different authors. They have written so many other books also. So, in the alphabetical sequence, the Abbas comes first. So, irrespective of the subject. So, here the author is given importance and the entries are made in the name of the author only. Then it is arranged. So, this is the alphabetical sequence. So, in the library also, the arrangement will be like this in the court cabinet. See, if you go back, now let us see the name catalog. Name catalog means <coughs> it is just an extension of author catalog. It may be, it is not necessary that it should be only author. It may be name of a person name of the place as an author or name of the institution as an author that is why but the entries should be in the name only that is why it is called name catalog if you look at this particular example you will come to know person as an author so actually this is the title this has been done by a person see Nehru Jawaharlal discovery of India. So, here the author comes as a person, then person as subject, 
ஜவஹர்லால் நேரு a biography by s gobal actually this is a biography of ஜவஹர்லால் நேரு done by s gopal so this here the author comes as a subject then name series oxford historical series it is a name of the series under this series you will find number of documents for this series also we have to prepare an entry and that has to be arranged alphabetically then the place name delhi is a place university is an institution so when you combine this both delhi comes as a place name but it is an author also so here the name has to be mentioned as delhi university so this is the example of name catalog if you go back then we will discuss about the title catalog also <coughs> in the title catalog generally what happens in the libraries the users come to the library with a request of title don't spell out properly the exact title so what we can do is we should give them freedom to search the documents which they need without any delay by providing cross reference entries for the title say for example psychology for doctors this may be a title that person who is coming to the library and looking for a document psychology for doctors he may not know the exact title there he must be thinking that may be psychology or doctors so for these two options we have to provide entries through which we can serve is our her purpose so this is the title catalog see this is an example of title catalog so these are the titles of the documents entries are made on these titles and arranged alphabetically then subject catalog subject catalog most of the users come to the library they come to the library with a request that they know only the major area of the subject they may not know what is library classification or cataloging or technical processing these are the areas which come under the subject library science but they are not very particular about their search or their demand but here we have to provide the subject entry for library science just we can guide them to go to the subject catalog it is arranged subject wise if they go to the particular place where the library science term is there they will come to know the collections of that particular subject in that particular place so from there cross reference is given in the subject catalog the details of the entry will be very limited only the basic particulars like call number author name title and publisher these things so through this they are guided through cross reference entries then they go to the exact place where the document is available so for the subject catalog we are making the subject entries and arranging the subject catalog according to the subject if you look at this particular this can be an example of this subject catalog aeronautics aesthetics arithmetic biotechnology civil engineering electrical engineering and fashion technology so you will find a difficulty here that is here there is no coherence or the subjects are scattered in the subject catalog see for example biotechnology and civil engineering these are not interrelated both are different but it comes here why 
this is the alphabetical sequence this is the only possibility which we can do so if you go to the subject civil engineering then you will be guided from there to some other place to locate your exact search so this is the example of the subject catalog if you go back then dictionary catalog dictionary catalog means you will have a little confusion between alphabetical catalog and dictionary catalog so what is the confusion in the alphabetical catalog author catalog name catalog title catalog and subject catalog are prepared separately and also arranged at different places in alphabetical sequence but the di dictionary catalog what it does it gives you the information about all the above author catalog name catalog title catalog and subject catalog these are all prepared separately and arranged in one sequence in alphabet that is called dictionary catalog but alphabetical catalog means entries are prepared for each and every component like author name title and subject and arranged separately as i told you just now but dictionary catalog all the entries are shuffled together and arranged in one sequence that is alphabetical order see if you look at this particular example see there are four groups the group which is in red color i think first two lines this has been arranged alphabetically from left to right there are two columns from left to right it has been arranged alphabetically the first two are which are in red color belong to subject category and the yellow colored author and blue colored exact title and the white colored are cross references so for subject title author and cross references for all four the entries are prepared and arranged in this typical sequence i shown in this particular slide so if you look at this particular slide anatomy of birds and business mathematics these two are the titles though it is a title it's not at one place continuously so it has been scattered because this is the quality of the dictionary catalog but accessing to the dictionary catalog is very easy anybody who can refer to a dictionary can use this dictionary catalog easily but the only difficulty is if he wants to know something of the particular subject and related terms he will have to go to s yes, instead of he so he will be doing something about alloc he wants to see some particular if he wants to see some other related subject by different author say for example satyagam he will have to go to s yes, so that will be little far away from the present location so this is the only disadvantage other it is useful to the users so these are the types of catalogs now if you go back as i have told you classified catalog classified catalog <coughs> the entries are prepared for all subjects but importance emphasis is given to the call number so it has two parts two parts means classified part and alphabetical part why we as library and information professionals we know about the classification system or schemes we can classify the documents according to a particular scheme either it may be db decimal classification or column classification so these two systems with these two system we are 
very well acquainted. But users may not be aware of these two systems. So here after preparing the entries, the entries are arranged according to the class number. If you look at this particular slide, see the first entry which is called leading section which is in yellow color. This is the first entry. Based on this only, the entries are arranged in catalog cabinets. So here only advantage is the classified part is really very useful. It allows a user to go through the entire collection. Collection means particular subject under one class number. That means at one place. So he is getting a chance to go through some other documents also which are, he is not really aware of already. So under this sequence it is arranged. Then why alphabetical index? We have already discussed about alphabetical part but why it is needed when it is arranged according to class number? It serves our purpose. We are arranging the documents at one place and it is served in the same way how it has been arranged in the catalog cabinet. There is no problem at all. But for the users, as I told you, it is very difficult for them to know about the classification systems. That's why what we do, we provide alphabetical index, alphabetical index to the documents which have been classified according to the class number and arranged. So if you look at this particular slide, so please show the slide. If you look at this particular slide, see the author name is Brown R. That is in yellow color. This is a leading section. But to support to this entry, we have given some class number also, call number 794.1 BRO. See, here you will come to know the title, how to play chess. For this, the uh, conversion of the class number for this particular title is 794.1. It was written by Brown R. That's why we have added first three letters as book number. In case a person who has written the same book, any different person who has written the same book will also be catalogued or classified in the same number which will be grouped together. Say for example, Charles. So instead of BRO, the number will be the same. First three letters, CHA will be added. So automatically what happens, the number will be the same. The according to the alphabetical order, that means that book number BRO, CHA. So that will be arranged one after another at one place. So users get a chance to go through the entire catalog. Then alphabetico classed catalog. This is the third category I told you. This is the combination of the above two. So this is the <coughs> one which we have to see. So under this the entries are prepared and arranged according to the alphabetical sequence by subject by providing the class number within the bracket after the title. So both are provided. When they go through the catalog alphabetical class, they will come to know the subject through that alphabetical catalog which are arranged. From there they will be guided to some other place for which that class number helps them. If you look at this particular example, see, slide please, see agriculture and related technologies. So this is the title and 630 is the corresponding class number for that particular subject. See, it has been arranged very systematically according to the alphabetical order. And the class numbers are mentioned within the brackets after the 
title of the subject immediately. So this helps the users to go through the alphabetical catalog as well as classified part. So these are the things which I want to tell you about the types of catalogs. Now we have discussed about the catalog, importance of the catalog, objectives and functions, the types of catalogs that can be provided in the library. Now we have to see the catalog can be provided, can be prepared and arranged in which form, what, what are its physical forms, that is very important. Here there are two forms, this can be grouped into two categories, major categories, conventional forms and non-conventional. So under conventional there are four types, bound register or ledger, printed book, sheaf or loose leaf and card. These four are coming under this category conventional forms. Now what is bound register? Bound register means the register is bound, then the entries for the documents are entered manually in the ledger. For that, separate space or pages are provided for entering these documents alphabetically. See, the entries are prepared manually. It helps the cataloger to make copies also as many as possible that can be provided for multi use in the library. So this is the bound register. If you look at the next method printed book, this printed book catalog instead of writing manually it is printed. So they generate a list of documents for particular library and they print it. After printing it is bound through some mechanism. So after doing this what they do, some of the libraries in India as well as abroad, they are generating the list of their documents and make it available for sales also. Say for example, British Library, National Library of Calcutta and Library of Congress, they are making their own printed book catalog. So this is the printed thing. Then sheaf or loose leaf. This is little different from the printed book catalog. Sheaf or loose leaf means the entries for each and every document are prepared in a separate slip. Then it is <coughs> bound into a volume. So what happens it is a loose leaf. Its advantage is it is very easy to use and the entries for new documents can be inserted or replaced without any difficulty. And the last one is card catalog. This is really prevalent and widely used in libraries of world including India. So this card catalog is really very important. This served the purpose of a library effectively. This card, if you look at this particular slide, just you will have an idea about the catalog card. So this is the catalog card. There are two vertical lines and one horizontal line which are in red color. So this is the place for the leading section. Generally, the size of this cord is 12.5 centimeter and 3.7.5, uh, 12.5 into 7.5. So there is a hole here. See, after making these entries, these entries are arranged in a cabinet by inserting the rod into this hole. 
so this is the place for writing call number see here you will come to know this is the class number and book number so both are written here this is the catalog card so this this is a very flexible method and this can be very useful to the users also to go through the catalog very easily accessibility is very easy and this is very convenient to replace the cards in case of any damage this can be replaced by a new card I destroying the earlier one so this is the most advantage and widely used in libraries so sorry then non convention forms just we were discussing about the conventional forms there were the four types I have already discussed here and uh, this is the non conventional forms non conventional forms may be of four types visible index micro forms opaque and verb opaque visible index means this is really not used in Indian libraries generally because uh, this is not recommended it is very expensive otherwise also it's not flexible so this is used only in the periodical section of our libraries that visible index the cards are inserted into a steel packet so that that first part that heading part will be visible that is why it is called visible index form so this is used only for the purpose of maintaining the periodicals especially current periodicals then the micro forms micro forms this is <coughs> basically a machine readable instead of making conventional cards or and other things the images are miniaturized into films or Fiji so this can be of two types this can be stored at two places either in the microfilm or microfiche so this microforms if you look at this particular slide you will come to know what are microforms so these are the frames which please frames these are the microforms so this will give you the uh, exact catalog of a particular document so these all white lines are the slides so if you go back you will come to know opaque so after uh, 80s due to the availability of uh, microcomputers and other related materials it made possible for the libraries to provide online public access catalog so this can be possible only in the computerized libraries this gives you all opportunities to search either by author by subject or any other if you look at this particular slide you will come to know this screen that helps you actually this screen it's a screen snapshot taken from the software soul so there are so many options at one go just you can see whatever you know, need actually if you want any information about the particular title you can go here by author you can click on this one see these are the multiple options so this is the thing then the web opaque the difference between this opaque and web opaque means the opaque is done only internally in the computer's library web opaque uh, features are the same but accessibility will be worldwide through web this opaque can be provided to share the catalog or the resources of the libraries through this web opaque so these are the uh, just this is an example of the web opac about CISA library they are providing their catalogs accessible to all people through online the second one is this is uh, web opac about IIT Bombay library so these are the things which I wanted to share with you about the topic I think you might have benefited a lot from this discussion and you must be very clear also best of luck thank you